Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan, and it is Happy Friday. I love Fridays, I just really do. So it is our Woodland Wonderland. We're working on the quilt from this booklet. And this week, we're in chapter six, which has the cute little hedgehog. So what I'd like us to do is break that chapter down and do this week, the hedgehog and the little stars. So the hedgehog is actually really easy. Uh, I'm just gonna show you the diagram there. So you can see how the diagram just breaks it down. See, he's really super simple. And then do the stars. There are two other parts to chapter six, which will do the Friday after Christmas. So that'd be next Friday. And so they're like, you know, the stand under the owl and then getting some stuff sewn up. Then I will also have everything up on the design board because right now I still have my um, old school block of the month up there because I am not taking it down until I get everything till they get the top done because I'm so close. It's just such a pain to take it back down again and put it back up every couple of days. So it has to stay up there till it gets finished, which hopefully would be maybe today, maybe today that'll be done. I think so. All right, so this is the one from the kit and so darling. I do have to do the applique still, but I, I'll do it on both of them at the same time. So let me show you, uh, you know, the red one, but first we've got to pick the fabric. So to make my little hedgy in red, we have to pick the fabric. And I decided that I was using a lot of dots, but I wanted this body of the hedgy to be, uh, the cute little hedgehog to be a floral. So this is what I came up with. I have, of course, the red and white dots which are all the background of the red versions. Uh, and then I, I found this floral. So I thought that is just so sweet, but I need a face that shows up against here. So, you know, I can't use the whites. I thought, oh, okay, so I've got a taupe for our um, year of color next year. This would be one of the, one shade of taupe. Uh, so I got that and I think that'll be really good. So now this is directional. So do I want the, lines going horizontal or vertical, probably horizontal. So I'll probably cut it like that. Now there are just two pieces I cut for here. And that means uh, cutting cutting process. One of our friends asked, you know, she, she learned, a bunch of people were taught at some point in your quilting career, you were taught cut one long strip and then subcut. And I was never taught that, so that was never in my even thought process to do that. I basically cut what is needed because particularly I'm making just one hedgehog. I'm not doing the whole quilt from these fabrics. I'm not reusing this fabric somewhere else. Uh, so there's no reason for me to cut a strip, which is way more fabric than I need. And it's wasteful uh, to me because then you have these extra pieces and then you have to do something with them. For me, I just want to cut what's needed. So I would look at the directions and uh, there are two pieces. One is a square that is, let me just pull you in here a little bit. One is a square and the other is just a little bit bigger than, a, than the square. Uh, so I will, if I want to make it a little bit oversized, I can come in and then uh, rotate and trim it afterwards. So I have my square piece. And then when I'm doing the piece that is not square, I do wanna check my direction. So because I wanna go horizontal, uh, I wanna have that, it'll be going this way to get the horizontal line, to get the longer side going horizontal. So, you know, I did not press this. Yes, you're seeing that correctly. So I'm gonna also just make it just a little bit bigger than I need. So I can sort of line up on those little ovals and get the shape exactly like I want it. And then I would be doing, you know, one more trim. I've got to get it down to size. So there is, to recheck that. Yeah, that's right. So I now have, yes, I didn't press it. I, I, I actually don't always press it. <laughs> so I have these pieces, which will be used for the hedgehog's face. Um, and now in the fabric, I have, because I was over, 
you know, doing it a little bit. I had that one little piece there, so I just cut it off. And this, this is what I have now from this. This is a fat quarter. So this is the only thing cut from the fat quarter. If I had gone ahead and cut the larger length, uh, cause I would have needed that, then you would have had a strip down here for what? There's, I mean, what am I going to do with that strip now? It's just, that's wasted because all of this space, I might have stuff that I can go this away with it. And it's just a much more usable piece to cut only what you need. So that is sort of my thought process on cutting, uh, how to cut things, particularly if you're not doing a pattern where all the fabrics are laid out. You're sort of just building it as you go or like this, you're just making one piece of that pattern. You just need to do what you need for that one unit. Um, so I'm going to sew up the hedgehog because I can't wait to see him. So here he is all sewn up. I put them together so that you could really see how they look. I just love the floral. Isn't that adorable? Okay. So now I'm going to get up close here because I want you to see what I fussy cut for the eye. And it was a bit serendipitous because the shape was a little bit bigger than I expected and caught some of that white, which looks like eyelashes. Doesn't it look like eyelashes? Um, and the center is from the middle of the flower. See how the flower has those little dots. That's where I brought this from. And then the little nose, I decided to put the white part of the petal towards the body and then his sweet little feet. Those are all I pulled. I pulled them all from the, um, from the, the floral, just the different sections of the floral. So that worked out. So aren't they super cute? You could, I could see a whole quilt of hedgehogs. I can see a whole quilt of everything that I do practically. <laughs> I think that they're so cute. And I've got the design board here, which you can stick pins in. Can you see I have that? That way it's really nice if you want to, you know, put it up on like a board to look at, you know, get a distance on something that you're working on. Okay. The other fun thing that I have for you today is I did the pattern uh, for our year long, uh, so along with the, uh, the book. The Secret Lives of Color. The Secret Lives of Color. Yes, the, I'd say the title right. Uh, and there's no quilts in here. My idea is to do the shoe fly blocks as we go along, which I've got a nine inch shoe fly block and a six inch, and I'm in the progress of making a three inch so that I'll have that to show you in the next day or so. And I'm going to make them all up in a, the three sizes in a different color as well. Just give you some ideas of what to do. But this book has 72 chapters. Each chapter is a color and the author, uh, Cass, Cassia St. Clair, uh, tells you a little bit about a color and then dives into a story on it. So I'm going to, Oh, I don't even know how to say that color. I'm going to pick one I can say. Each of the stories are really interesting and I'm reading this like a little sentences to get you excited about them. Emerald in the greens. Emerald, it was Shakespeare who cemented the relationship between green and envy. That alone should get you reading the book. Don't you want to know how that developed? I do. I do. And I want to save Emerald for when we get there, which is a ways. This is on page 220. I don't know how many days in the emerald is, but when I do emerald, I'll be doing a block. I think I'm going to do those six inch blocks. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. All right. I have a mail call, <laughs> some sweet mail from our friends. Uh, super cute from Betty. Look at this. Isn't that darling? And you all write such wonderful notes to me. I really appreciate it. Let's see what Linda sent one. So cute. Look at the little llama <laughs> with a little scarf and a little gnome guy. And she sent me a bunch of edges. So my collection is growing. Sometime I'm going to get the box out and I'll show you what all I have. And I should just make one block. So I'll show you where I'm going with this. Eventually I'd like to do it next year. I'd like to do it next year. All right. What I got from Laura, Laura sent this card plus, uh, some edges, but this one is neat. It is one of the fabrics done for the Sarah Johnson collection of the Shelbourne museum by RJR fabrics. Uh, so I love those reproduction ones, particularly anything that's supporting the museums. Those are awesome. So thank you, Laura. 
And then I have Valeria sent me, yes, <laughs> a basket of goodies. Oh my goodness, you are so sweet. She is often, you are often waving to you. Yes, Valeria, you're in our morning chats. So this yummy basket from Hickory Farms has uh, loads of, like, of course, sausages and cheeses and beautiful wines. Look at that. There's crackers in there and cookies. Ah, this is so gorgeous and like a really neat box that I can use again. That will be very useful. <laughs> I love containers. <laughs> so, okay, my friends, you are going to make a hedgehog and some stars. Don't forget the stars. See if you can squeeze all of that in, or at least squeeze the hedgehog in, you know, because you gotta do the cute one. Uh, you can get the scars, scar, the, the stars <laughs> next weekend. And then if you're thinking about doing this with me, or even if you don't wanna sew along, if you just wanna read along, that would be awesome. There is a digital book and an audio book for this. So even if you're just reading uh, every five days, we'll probably read a chapter. I think that's how it works out so that we end um, just before the end of the year. So excited. All right, I love you. Mwah. See you online.